by a raise of hand, how many of you have ever quit your job or know somebody who quit their job because you were not feeling happy? Let me see. It actually, that's great, it actually happens a lot more frequent than we might think. Some of the largest companies only manage to sustain their employees between one and two years. And when people ask, why did you leave the company? Here are some of the most frequent reasons. Everything is emergency. No feedback is given. No appreciation is given. Manager takes all the credit. I love that one. The entire corporate culture. Clearly, we're doing something wrong as leaders. While we focus and pay attention caring for the business results, the productivity of the company, sometimes we tend to neglect, which I would argue is the most important element of business success, caring for the people of the organization, which is kind of ironic because organizations that focus on people are also the ones that perform at their best. And now the question of the day, the million dollar question. How do we get there? How do we build companies focused on productivity and caring for the people? To answer this question, I team up with this gentleman, Cristobal. He's the CEO of a large startup accelerator. Both of us are really passionate about culture. So we went on a journey, on a quest to answer this question. How do you build a great culture? So we talked to hundreds of business leaders, executives, entrepreneurs, and we put all the learnings into a simple framework, which I would like to present to you today, the PERFORM framework. What are the areas that we, sometimes being very busy with the business, tend to neglect? Everybody knows these areas, but it's not about knowing them. It's about paying attention to them consistently. The PERFORM framework, Applied now, but more than 300 businesses across the world. The first area, purpose and values. What is the purpose of the business? What is the bigger why of the organization? Why should we even care that this business exists? Let me introduce you to somebody else. I was looking for an accountant a few years ago. I asked a few friends, hey, do you know anybody that's good? So they were like, yeah, talk to Klaus. Okay, this Klaus, what do you do? You go check them out. I go to his webpage and the first thing that I see is this message. I help small business owners sleep better at night. He was not an accountant. Accounting is his tool to live his purpose. He's excited to wake up every morning to do that. It doesn't matter if you're an accountant or if you are leading a large organization, it counts. Your purpose counts. It will bring you more customers, more investors, and it will attract amazing people to the company. People that share the same type of values. And by the way, values, it's not just something the HR manager is putting on a job ad, right? It's a lot more practical. It, it's like a compass. It guides our decisions. Let me give you another example, this time coming from Lithuania, exceptional leader. She built a company with more than 100 people herself, her co-founders. Co and since the company is fully remote, 35 plus countries, they work and operate remotely. Once a year, they'll go to uh, these uh, vacations. So they live together, they work together. And the first vacation they, they went to together, she realized, oh my God, I'm not sure I want my kids to be around some of the people from my team. Because they were great performers, but they were not fitting the culture, they were not fitting the values. And this is a question for, for you to think about. What culture do you want to be a part of as a leader or as somebody joining the company? Something to plan around. And talking about planning, this is the second area, effective planning. But Stoyan, 
I don't have time to plan my time. I'm, I'm just so busy. There's so much to do. Really, I wonder why. Maybe you haven't planned your time in the first place, and now you have no time for anything, including planning. The best leaders understand I cannot be down in the jungle, hustling, doing things, being operational all the time. I need to go high up, right? I need to create a space so I can see the whole pictures. How far did we go? Do we have to change the course? And what are the most important goals and objectives? Whatever book about time management you read, you'll find these two principles about planning. Number one, you want to start with the end in mind. What is the end result? What is your target? What are we after at the end of the day? But then secondly, creating an action plan so we can utilize our resources effectively. Let me give you an example about that. This is a scene from a Hollywood movie. Okay, now let me show you how this has been created. Spoiler alert, this is not a Hollywood movie. This is a sci-fi short film that I was the producer of on a really, really limited budget. And this is, this is how planning works. You set this big vision, right? We want to create a Hollywood movie, great. Hollywood looking movie. How do we utilize the resources that we have in the most creative way so we can achieve this goal? Delegating the right roles to the right people, which is the next area, roles and responsibilities. Wait, uh, what do you mean roles and responsibilities? Maria is the head of marketing and, and Michael is, is the IT support. Yeah, but what do you really do? What are your responsibilities under your role? The best leaders understand that they have to clarify the responsibilities. They have to take the time to understand not only what people are good at, but what do they love to do? What are they passionate about? Imagine working in a company where your boss consistently upgrades your role so that it fits your passions, the things that you're really passionate about. Now imagine that the whole team is spending the majority of their time and focus doing things that they're passionate about and they're good at. And talking about focus, that's the next area, focus and execution. You can be planning, you can set goals. At the end of the day, it's about getting things done. The best leaders understand it's not about adding more stuff. It's about learning to say no. There's so much things coming in our attention and demands, requests. I once had a client, his name is Federico, and he's from Italy, so he gave me a call and he's like, Stoy, and I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, he didn't say it like that, he had a great accent, I was just trying to make it more dramatic. Um, so, so he calls me, he's like, Stoy, I'm so overwhelmed. I started the business, I have several new clients, my wife is expecting a second kid, I'm not sleeping, it's really, what should I do? Well, first of all, breathe, okay? But then, tell me, what are the top three things, your priorities in the business? If you do them, you make major progress in the business and you're excited about them. So he make the polls, and wrote down what are the top three priorities. Okay, second question. How much time do you spend on those top three priorities? <sighs> no more than 5%. Okay, 5%. What has to happen for you to go to 80 or 85? So he started coming up with ideas, writing things down. He left, calls me back in three weeks. Stern. 85%. The best leaders understand they have to clarify the priorities. And I want to ask you this question, something to reflect on. What are your top three priorities at the moment? And how much time do you spend on those priorities? How much energy do you put in there? Which is our ex next area, actually. Optimal energy. The well-being of the people. Do we pay enough attention on how are we feeling? 
how much energy we have. And I have a friend, really focused guy, really productive guy, always on, always on, performing, performing, performing. He wanted to build his business, so he was completely focused. The problem was he would never take a break. He was always on. A couple of years in this regime, and he, the guy was done. He was out. It was so bad that he would go to the grocery shop and he wouldn't know how to make a simplest choice. Should I take this cheese or this cheese? I don't know. His body was resisting him to make a choice. It was bad. That person was me. I burned out so badly that it took me more than two months to really completely shut down and and rest and recover. And, and then I asked myself, how did I let this happen? The day the burnout rates are at a record high. We talk about mental health issues like this is something normal we have in the companies. It's not normal. It shouldn't be. The best leaders take the time to really prioritize and pay attention to the mental, physical, emotional well-being of themselves and the people around them. Right? Taking some time, sometimes it just give a call. Hey, how are you feeling? You need to take some time off. What can I do for you? Having these conversations, which lead us to the next area, robust communication, the internal communication. How efficiently do we communicate with each other? And I love a metaphor that uh, I heard from Hollywood cinematographer Shane Herbert, which I interviewed on a podcast, um, and he, he was talking about leadership. And he was like, Stoyan, my biggest challenge as a leader is communicating the vision, making sure that we are all making the same movie, right? Think about that in business. Is the marketing and sales and the operations department making the same movie? Or do we have to do something around it? So we can align. Talk about the things that are important in the company. And sometimes we don't because we're so busy, right? The topics around values, priorities, over and over again, as we already said. But also, achievements, celebrating the small wins. Great job, Maria. Wow, what a great report you did. We just landed a new account. Let's buy some cake and celebrate. Yes, doesn't take much time. But also talk about the failures as well. What went wrong? What mistakes did we make? By the way, the, the best leaders are also the most humble ones. They have the humility to admit their mistakes. Right? A and that creates a culture of safety for everybody else to be also open to share the mistakes and po point out what's not working out. Feedback culture. Last but not least, mental toughness. Our capability to deal with stressors. If you're a leader, you're not going to be always sailing through smooth waters. I'm sorry. Doesn't work this way. Sometimes you might have multiple storms in a simple, in a single day, right? And, and it's your job as a leader to remain calm, to find this strength and peace in the midst of the crisis and lead your team safety through the storms. Remember, you, you are the chief motivation officer. This is a phrase I learned from uh, another exceptional leader. She's a CEO and founder of a very successful fintech startup in Estonia. That's her, Kaidi. Kaidi shared with me, she was working for a stock exchange as a CEO previously, and she shared with me one morning she just woke up at the wrong side of the bed, and it was like, ah, uh, one of these mornings. She went to the office, didn't have her coffee yet, you know. A and her office is at the end of the floor, right? So she needs to pass through everybody. 15 minutes later, the head of HR comes to her office and is like, 
Kylie, what's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't have my coffee. I was in traffic. Yeah, great, but I had three people from the team come to my office, to the HR, asking me, what's wrong with Kaidi? Is somebody getting fired? Uh, did we lose the big, what's going on, right? And that was the time she understood, oh my God, I don't have the luxury to show up with such a face. Everybody, all the eyes are on me as a leader. I need to be the example that inspires everybody else, right? So that's it, the seven areas. If we pay more attention to these things, it's not about doing it once. If we pay more attention to these things, we might actually have a shot to create a great culture. And just to wrap up, I would like to invite you to close your eyes for just a minute. And I want you to imagine that you are responsible to build a company with a great culture. How do people treat each other? How focused and productive is everybody? How passionate is everyone on the bigger purpose, on the mission? And how do we go through challenges and struggles together? Now open your eyes again. Regardless of your title, everybody is a leader. And everybody can make a change. And if we want to build tomorrow the companies that you just imagined, today is the time to start making an impact. Making an impact so that we can have not only companies focused on being productive, but also companies that care for their people. Thank you so much.